This is Ziggy. He's going home today. Mom's been in hiatus. Her house burnt back in November. And so he's been here for about four months. So he's had some brushing done and some maintenance work done in that time. But with him going home, we're on the quarantine. I want to make sure that the essential areas that need to be cared for in between grooms are taken care of. Ziggy's a little bit of a wiry guy. And he doesn't always get along with every groomer, do you, buddy? Um, I get along pretty well with him because I'm gentle. You bracket, don't hold, don't squeeze, don't pull. If your dogs aren't letting you brush, you're probably holding, squeezing, or pulling. Stop, give them love, breathe, and then start over. You don't do a hug before a handshake, huh, sir? All right, so you're gonna check the whole body for matting. I'll go through with my slicker brush, which you saw me use on, this is the Slicker Soft. This is a Chris Christensen. It's got nice soft teeth and it's got forgiveness. It actually feels really good to him. I'm not digging. I'm using the weight of the brush to do the work. You don't, you don't see me digging into that sensitive skin because if you start to irritate their skin, they're not going to let you brush them. That's another reason why dogs don't let you brush them. It's because you're, you're going too hard on them. And I'm, I don't know if you notice in my hands, they're guide hands. I'm not holding anything. I'm just telling them this is where I need you to be. And then I create a bracket for them to rest them, their body on. And they know when they get to that my bumper that they have to go back the other direction. See that thumb there? That's keeping him from pulling his face away from me. And it's not hurting him. It's just telling him this is where I need your face to be. So that's how you handle a dog who doesn't want their face done. Because Ziggy never wants his face done. Um, I, don't, I don't, you know, I don't have too much of a problem with him. But if you have different handling skills, then you're going to have trouble with this dog. So his paw pads aren't in too bad a shape. We're going to clean him up. 40 blade, which I went through in my other video. You just go and you follow those circles. You're trying to just line the edge of those circles with the tip of your blade. And you're just drawing an outline around them. You can look inside, make sure there's no matting. He's not a really a toe chewer, so I'm going to leave some of that as a buffer. If you take it too bald, they'll start itching and they'll start digging at their paws. If there's a bunch of staining on their paws, chances are they're already itching. And it's because of grass or some kind of allergy, so then you would want to get rid of that hair. Let's look at his nails. How are Ziggy's nails? His nails are in pretty good form. He doesn't have much. So I'm going to leave him because um, that's the quick right there. And he's, it's be like leaving your nails about the length mine are right now. Like I said, he just got done not too long ago. And his nails don't grow as fast as his brother's. Um, the hiney haul. Oh, <laughs> that's the stuff that you guys are going to want to take care of. Once again, hand underneath. I am now his legs. I'm not holding him. He's saying no. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. And then take that tail. I'm going to lift it. Up. Actually, I'm going to come under here. He's not the big. Actually, he's going to let me just hold it normal. His brother, I had to, I had to become the legs. Remember? And I'm not pulling. I'm going to. If he starts to step away from me, I'm not going to fight him. I'm just going to ask gently again. Hey, Ziggy, I need you here. You need your red guard comb or your your shortest guard comb. Find his hiney hold. And once again, I'm going to play with his butt a little bit and around that area so he doesn't go to moving away. Once he's comfortable with the fact that I'm going to be back there, then I'll go in there and I'm going to start just trimming some of that away. Got to find it. It's like, where's Waldo? And now they hear, oh, there he is. Okay. So this is just a sanitary to keep him from getting poop on his hiney hole. Don't use a 10 blade in here, guys, unless you're real comfortable with it. Oh, he's starting to pull away. So once again, I'm going to ask him. And notice I don't fight him. When they start to pull, I don't pull back. How silly would that be? You pull back and you're, it's game over because they're just going to try to get away from you. No different than walking your dog. If you start pulling, they're going to pull. So, I just, you got to be patient. All right, now, he's got his, let's look at his sanitary area. There it is. He's got a little wee hair built up in there. And red guard comb again with the growth of the hair. You can go down, down. If you go against, watch out for the skin right here. The skin, this is an area that you can clip with your clippers. Even a 10 blade can clip that. See that little fold of skin? So you don't see me going in there like that. I will go with the with the growth. Uh -uh. For you guys at home, go with the growth of the hair. And then you won't have it. Now, if a dog starts to, like, I don't want to stand up like that, that's okay. Now, see, I haven't grabbed a hold of him yet. I let him slide down my bracket. He's like, oh, okay. Starting to go outside of my line. So then I'm going to lift. And now here I can go up and, and against the grain and really get the inside of that leg nice and tight. Cause that's an area that mats really fast. I'm going to turn him around do the other side. He's very talkative. Ziggy likes to talk. It's okay. Um, here, same thing. I can go up 
avoiding that flap of skin with your clippers. I'm going to tell you guys, don't even go near it if you're at home. If you get matting there, that sucks, but I'd rather have that than have your dog bleed on your, hand, on your watch. It'd freak you out. Lift him back up again. A little bit here so he's not peeing on his belly here. And I'm doing everything gentle the way I would want you to do it at home. Okay. So that's done. His sanitary's done. That one's too bad. Now his front feet, I know for a fact, are not a good thing for him. But we're going to go ahead and give it a whirl. Once again, bracket. And it's because he's built crooked. I mean, his legs, his joints hurt. Ziggy, his legs go every direction but the way that they should. So because of that, it makes him walk funny. And he has, I'm sure, discomfort. And so I'm not going to grab any joints from here down because I'm not going to hurt him. I'm not going to want him to experience pain on, on, with what I'm doing at all. So if a dog's telling you know about something, sometimes you got to consider it. it may not be behavioral. It might be a pain issue. And you got to consider that. Westies, Scotties, most of my Terriers, I ask them to sit. She probably won't. And then I'll do their, I, I'll pop their front leg out while they're sitting and do their feet like this. Because they can't bend their legs backwards like some dogs can. And then I can get anything done. But if I go and take a Westie or a Scotty and I pop their legs back, this area right here, they can't handle it. And they'll fight and they'll bite. People think Scotties are, are bad for their feet. And it's only because the handlers are not good with their feet. Dogs are fine. Okay, here we go again. I'm going to take that hair. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm grabbing that hair so I have a line. And I'm just doing a real quickie on him because Mom's going to be here to pick him up. And I want him... I want him to be in good form until he comes back for his next groom. But he's not getting a haircut today. He's getting a minimal, huh, bud? Armpits are real important because they mat really bad if you don't keep track of them. So we're going to check his armpits. Here he zigs. And I don't know if you guys are noticing. I, I give him some freedom. He's got to have a pause. Um, you got to keep him. If they start to get stressed or nervous, it's your job to figure out what you can do. Calm him back down. Get him back in that happy place. This is a distraction like Jimmy there with the camera. He really wants to know what's going on with Jimmy. But your blessing is they can only think of one thing at a time. So a lot of times you can make it be you. But when they're ADHD like that, it can work to your advantage when you're doing uncomfortable areas too. Armpits are not pleasant for dogs. They're ticklish and they're in a tough spot. And just scoop that out. Check for matting and scoop that out. If you screw up, we don't care. We'll fix it when we come back in. We can't put hair back on, but it'll grow. Just check it. Make sure it's not matted. Matted areas are here. Here is a real bad spot. Um, you want to check armpits, and you want to check the belly where they lay. Any time that you have a harness on a dog here, here, and here, you want those areas checked behind the ears. So if you don't brush anything else, just brush the, the mat zones and keep those free of matting. Because then they can grow out to be 10 inches long, and it's no big deal. They're not going to hurt when you go to groom them. You guys got time at home right now? Utilize it. You know, work on, on exercises to calm your dog down so you can brush them. You do it at night when you're watching TV, you know. When they're thinking about it as cuddling and love, not when they feel like you're you're trying to invade their space and do things that you ought not be doing. That's the groomer's job. Well, it can be your job too. This might actually be good. I'm I'm uh, bracketing again. I would never hold his chin hair because what did I say? He hates it. They hate it. They hate it. And um, all it's going to do is make him fight. I'm going to let him rest his head. The reason why I'm I'm steadying this is because I don't want to pull. So I'm going to whittle at this a little bit with my comb. But you notice I'm never going to get a mat out with a comb. I'll brush it out or finger it out, and then I'll bring the comb in. He's not matted. We've kept him from getting matted while he was staying here. He's just got some eye boogers. Okay, so eyes. Everybody wants to know about eyes. That's the most important thing. You want to see that expression. You don't want to cut up past the stop area. This is your stop. This is his visor. See how cute his visor was? If you pull back too far, you're going to change the look of his expression. You want it to lay natural. So when you go to do this, 10 blade... Okay, and I'm going to go in here because I know Ziggy, I've seen his last groom. I didn't do it. Um, he was really giving her troubles for his face. So I'm going to come in here and make sure he's comfortable with me in here again. Like I said, a bracket. There's my thumb. There's my index finger. There's no squeezing taking place. He's just got a place to rest his head. It's like a little pillow of love, huh, Ziggs? Pillow of love. And he talks. He's like, oh, God, Chris. So I'm going to lift this back just a little bit and take the corner of my blade and go in there and just start drawing. See, he's fine. Give Ziggy a minute, guys. He won't fight you if you give him a minute. I have been told that Ziggy's been biting for his grooms. You see that? He ain't biting for his grooms. He's been wonderful. It's all in how you're handling him. I was a little concerned because I was doing this booger you know, for years and I never had a trouble out of him. I thought well, maybe he was just getting uncomfortable. And I'm just, it's like a paintbrush. You just gotta take that. And I'm not touching anything 
other than, and I'm not going, I'm just going all enough to where I can get the hair, but I'm not going to, you know, rub it against his skin. And I'm letting the blade do the job. You know, I let that blade cut that hair. You don't want to push and, and force it. You don't move it until the blade's cut through it. And it's like I'm combing his eyes. It's painting his eyes. All right. So there's that. Huh, Ziggy? Can you see a little better now, sir? And I can take my thinners and, and clean that out, too, if I want to. I can just, let's get rid of it, because it's going to be a while before you're in here again. Let's just get rid of the excess. Okay. If I had a dog, and I wasn't a groomer, and I had, and, and they were haircut dogs, the tools I would own would be a slicker brush, a decent comb, um, and a pair of thinning shears, like this. These are guides. These aren't very, oh no, these are Kenchies. These are kind of expensive. You can get a set of guide gators. You can Google it for like 60 bucks. And I know it seems like a lot. You guys have no idea. These little bad boys right here, 189. Our tools are not cheap and you're going to find that. I saw people looking at clippers and they're like, oh my God, they're expensive. Yes, they are expensive. If you're going to um, groom dogs, you should have good tools and they're not cheap. It's no different than a hairdresser. But you can go a little bit um, cheaper and... Still get you're not gonna have the same quality results, maybe not cut as quickly, but it's enough to keep them good between grooms. Now, these guys we don't keep their eyelashes, if you kept their eyelashes, it'd be something totally different. But I don't expect you guys to do that. We're just clearing out enough for him to go home, and then let's do this. Oh, I think we're checking for mats, I'm not finding any. If I find a mat, I'm not gonna pull through it. I'm going to stop and I'm going to use my brush to get it out and then I'm going to take my comb. My comb just checks the quality of the coat. A good finished coat, you should be able to comb right through. That includes a D-shed. You're getting your dogs de-shedded. The comb should never catch on anything. It should just glide right through the coat so you can get all that dead hair out, all those mats out, get them in good shape. Come here, bud. I'll trim up his feet a little bit. I'm bouncing around, but he's looking at Jimmy, so I'll work on the areas. Like I said, they can think of one thing at a time, and I'm going to use this opportunity to work on the other areas that maybe will be a little more difficult to get done without distraction. But he's been lovely. You see Heather and Aaron? He's lovely. And give me an ounce of crap. He's actually better than his little brother Chester today. Yeah, see bracket again? He's like, leave my foot alone. And I'm going to go around the bottom. All of his friends are playing. We're not operating, guys, just so you know. No, I'm not accepting grooming uh, clients and appointments at this time. We're in the middle of a pandemic. These are dogs that were here for uh, boarding that were long stays in emergency circumstances. Two of them are because mom is stuck in Florida, can't get over the state line. The other two was a house fire. So don't be... Yelling at me for, for, for being open right now because I'm really not. I'm just finishing up my commitments. Okay, we're giving him some little feet again. Now he's got the funniest feet. Now I know he's funny with his legs. Like I said, that's a bracket. If I grab a hold of him from here down, he's going to fight. The other thing, if a dog puts her foot on you, they're getting ready to fight you. So you want to try to keep all paws off me, pup. That's what I say. Yep, and he's starting to do a little circle around. Here you go. There you go. And you see when a dog starts getting raunchy, and that's what he was, he could have been turned real fast on me, and because uh, he's starting to give me some resistance. I call that resistance. And I'm not going to fight him. I'm not going to force him. I'm not going to get mad about it. And then he'll calm down. See that stress yawn? That means he's, he's wondering about what I'm doing. He's not real happy, but wait, she's not fighting me. So I guess it might be okay. I might be safe and I won't fight too bad. But I'm on his watch right now. If I do the slightest thing wrong, he's going to, I'm going to lose him. You guys don't see it. I show you, but I love him too much. I'm not going to make him go go through that. But that stress yawn means this is an area that's uncomfortable for him. Especially, see that crooked joint? He's got a crooked joint right there, which means that pain, that leg can experience pain. Just from being handled. That's why I'm staying up here. I'm staying away from those joints. And I know a lot of my clients out there have elderly dogs. Be mindful of that. If they're giving you trouble, pay attention to why. You can find a spot where they're comfortable. You can, you can do all this at home. Watching television, put them on your lap. <laughs> All of it. Because you'd be less inclined to think about what you're doing, too. And you won't be so nervous. Confidence is what gets this done. They got, And they're going to like you doing it better anyways because they know you love them. Ziggy knows I love them, but it took a while for him to figure that out. Probably three or four grooms before he trusted me entirely. Hello, buddy. And now he knows Chris loves. I do. I love him. 
Good boy. All right, the inside of the ears. Some dogs pull ear hair, or some clients do. He doesn't have much, so I don't have to. And his ears don't get real ganky, but I'm going to get rid of that. That's kind of gross. So just check them. They're not real dirty. This is the ear leather I was telling you about. Notice I'm not touching it with my brush. But you want to make sure there's no lot knots along that. And that you can take a comb. It's okay, bud. And see, my fingers are bracketing down here. You're wondering how the heck he's staying so still. He's got a place to rest his head. If he comes away from it, I'm going to put his head back down and ask him again. Real soft. No, no pressure. And then he's like, oh, okay, that's not so bad. But they're going to be curious. They're like little kids. You know, they'll, hear, they'll see a fly fart and they're going to look at the other direction. You may not always understand it, but just know they're not trying to be disobedient. Dogs naturally want to please you. So don't get mad. It's your job to stay calm and laugh and understand that they're, they're, they're a little nervous about what you're doing too. Okay, there's some mats. Yay, I found some. Okay, this is what I was telling you about. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to let him shake because he's like, whoa, that feels funny, Crush. Let's get rid of this because if I didn't, if I don't, oh, scissors out of the way. If I don't get rid of this, by his next groom, he's not going to have ears because we're going to have to shave it off. That's a really sensitive area. So people, when you get your dog home from the groomer and they have no ear hair left and he looks silly and you're upset, it's because they were matted and it's, <coughs> we're not going to um, hurt the dog to get rid of that. Okay, I've got them loosened up enough, so now I can just take my comb and pull them out. And that's what you should be able to do all through your dog. You should be able to take a comb. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to get some of these and some slickers, and I'm going to offer them on my website. You guys can um, order them and get them from me. You know, we'll rush them to you. Maybe um, some some uh, gator thinners if you feel comfortable enough. I'll recommend clippers. I'm not going to order a bunch of clippers in because they are pretty pricey, even the cheap ones. But I'll give you a link to where you can get those things. Okay, that's kind of gross, right? He has yucky teeth, and um, that's long hair, so it's been a while since that's been trimmed out. But um, he's not going to like this, but I'm going to show you what you can do. <laughs> Come here, Ziggs. Because his mouth is going to stink, and that hair is going to get gross. So, you know, 10 blade again. Now, um, I'm putting a bracket around, and if I go in there and scare him, I'm, I'm just going to do this a little bit so he gets used to the feel of it, and it's not going to be a big deal when I go in there and do this thing. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this, some of that nastiness. So he, does, he doesn't like it on the nose yet, so I'd have to do it up here. Call this desensitizing, sacking out. Um, you got it. You don't just go in there with an uncomfortable vibration and expect them to hold still. You t you warn them that it's coming, and then they're like, okay, that's not so bad. And then he's still a little wiggly, but if you've seen this dog, <laughs> I've seen him not let a grimmer near his muzzle area because he's aggravated. So I think he's doing pretty good. There's slight resistance, but not bad. But you see how I calm him down? In between that, you got to take the time and just calm him. Go back to something that's good. If he starts to get aggravated, keep working on him. Because if you don't, he's going to think, oh, if I just get wiggly, then the whole thing is over. And there's relief. And then you feel relieved, and he feels relieved. And he'll think, next time I'll just do that to mom, and we'll both be relieved a lot faster. Okay, sit. 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 Good boy. Hi, Ziggs. And I want to get rid of He has a little bit of a crooked beard going on, too. I don't like that. We're going to get rid of a little bit of that. Not a whole lot. Just enough to make him where he doesn't look crooked because his legs are already crooked you don't need a crooked face huh he's adorable i just love him so yeah that's zigs those are the things i would expect you guys to do oh tail <laughs> tail tail's important dangerous scissors i'm not being safe with my scissors guys try to keep them out of the way all right see how i'm just once again bracket for his tail if I grab a hold of it, he's going to pull away, and then it's going to be a fight, and then you're going to have a dog who doesn't want his tail handled. Blech. So once it's brushed out, I'm going to check it for matting all the way to the base. I should be able to run a comb through it. Run a comb. Feeling good. Feeling good. Comb through the whole dog. Make sure you didn't miss any spots. There. Good oh boy, Ziggies. And like I said, this is feet, face, and fanny. This is not a full groom. I ain't, I'm not going to show full grooms because I think you guys will get more frustrated and I don't want anything bad between you and your dog. <laughs> not to mention, we have to work with these dogs to get them to stand like this. And if you're trying to do it at home and you fight with them, then we have to go back to ground zero and reteach them. If they learn any bad habits at home, we got to reteach them. Ziggy's been here for um, five years now, coming. And he doesn't like to hold still. You can barely pick him up off the ground. So first few grooms were a little challenging to teach him. And they can revert back. Like I said, he's had some couple handling experiences in here that I don't think were up to suit him. And um, just something he wasn't used to, you know. And then I had to, we had to go back over him. But 
Oh, yep, there's a knot. I know. See, he's very sensitive because I didn't even pull. And if you did, if you went to pulling on this dog in any way and hurt him, or he felt like you hurt him, it's game over. You, you are going to be done. He's got to know that I'm not going to keep being forceful with him. I, nothing drives me worse than seeing people actually get the mats out with combs. But he's got a mat right there. My brush isn't getting it. Take my Ferminate. Hold right here. Here's the leather. This is real important, guys. You, everybody's got a Ferminate. I know they do. Especially if you have double coats. But um, these are wonderful for getting rid of mats. Right at the base of it. And, I can, and I'm holding the hair so it's not pulling on his ear. Because it's such a sensitive area. And look at me getting that mat out without even hurting him. And you can do that on a really thick mat. There's the mat. And that would have been a mess by the next groom. Just that little tiny thing. No. Uh, four feet on the table six. You're not doing that. Good boy. So now I should be able to do this. And he is worthy of going home without matting for the next probably two, two three weeks. I just took some time off of mama's maintenance. Oh, good boy. Good boy. So cute. All right. There you go, sir. That's it. He's ready to go home to his mama and get love after how many months? They've been here for three months. November 26th. Poor dog. Amen. And we've loved every minute of I know Mama's been missing him. What are you talking about? I know you're so excited. You're not going to like the clone. If I put clone on him, he's going to do that dance, that little snake dance on the floor. Oh, come here. I know he doesn't see He doesn't even like being caught, guys. So him being that dude on the table is pretty amazing. This dog never stops moving. Do it again. You never stop moving. You don't. Yep, here goes that stupid, stupid smell of stuff. All right, guys. Hi, Oliver. Hi, Booby. Shannon, you're beautiful. Your friend, she needs a groom. Gosh. I guess I'll be playing, playing with these guys. Huh. Since you're here. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Oh, thanks, guys, and good luck. If you have any questions, just you know, give me a shout-out, and I'll help you in any way I can.